Welcome to this tutorial on importing a solved DOE from Microsoft Excel into Workbench. Microsoft Excel is the world's most used engineering tool. There are many ways to use Excel with ANSYS, drive ANSYS through the SDK or ANSYS as a service, Solver, which was covered in another tutorial. You can use it to generate or edit design point tables, to post-process results, and much, much more. This demo will focus on importing a table of experimental data into Workbench for post-processing in Design Explorer. But first, we'll also take a quick look at how to use Excel to drive ANSYS solvers through the SDK and this new ANSYS as a service. ANSYS users have been using Excel macros to drive ANSYS products for many years. You can get the ANSYS SDK toolkit from the customer portal already uh, and hook yourself up. More recently, we've been working on ANSYS as a service and as an extension to the SDK. This is technology that enhances specific ANSYS components so they can be integrated tightly with third-party software. If you start with a, a remote client, and this could be a Visual Basic through Excel or MATLAB or Python or whatever, and you can use the session manager for the initial hookup to disconnect or reconnect to live sessions to create multiple connections and more. It returns a list of available services, and then you can request to start that component. This passes through and actually starts the ANSYS as a component session. This returns a session ID, which goes back to the client. Then the session manager gets out of the way so you can make a direct connection to the ANSYS as a service component session. So here's just a quick look at it. This is something set up in Excel. You would create a button called connect to running session. Then there's a macro. And the SDK that will release soon has all this information about exactly what to have in the macros and so on to, to make this all work. So here's the, just another quick look at that macro. Here's another one looking at the load data. So here's the macro in Excel. And then here's the actual macro when you go in and look at the Visual Basic behind it. So look for that ANSYS as a service SDK coming out soon. Now let's look at how to use Excel for a DOE. You can, you can use it to format a DOE with or without results. Once you have that DOE, you can use it to solve in Workbench, maybe perhaps with other systems, or you can just build a response surface directly off the results from uh, Excel. And then you can explore and optimize in Design Explorer. So let's go through and proceed to the live demo. Workbench can import or export CSV files, that's comma-separated values that are in ASCII text files. So the easiest way to figure out the proper format is to export a DOE, uh, particularly if it already has all the right input and output parameters. So in this case, we have an example that has some input parameters, W1 radius and thickness, an input parameter here for the structural solve, and then a bunch of output parameters. So we could preview design of experiments just to get an example to work with. It's not solved yet. Oops, parts of it were solved from the last time we solved this. Uh, so what I can do though is I can right click and say export this data. Export here, so we can just go and take a look at it. I can right click on it and open it with Excel. So we can take a quick look at this imported CSV file. And when you import a CSV file into Excel, each comma separates into the next field so you get all these nice columns. Uh, but you can see exactly how this gets laid out. And the first two cells, uh, in this case, are remmed out. You can type anything you want in here, but it is helpful to use these cells. You can title your spreadsheet, and you, you can use this row to remind yourself the name of each parameter. W1 is the name of the parameter for P7, and radius is P10, and so on. Name is the first column. It's just numbers of, of all the different rows. And then P7 is the first one, which we know from this list, W1, and P10 is the next, which you know from up here is radius. You can see they're filled out. Now there were a few that weren't filled out. We could fill those in, 0 0.85, uh, 0 0.001, if you had experimental data or some other source that filled these in. And then we could read it back in, and because it's already in the correct format, it would just go in and we could repopulate that table using this. Or, or we could save it or we could combine tables together and all sorts of reasons to, to want to do something like this. But in our case, we're just using it as a basic example of what the format should be. I go down here, I switch over to my experimental data. Uh, I've labeled this refinement points. I think that's still okay. This is rimmed out after all. So I take a look, P1, P2, P20, uh, P1, P2, P20, so it should be fine. You can see all my experimental data going down here to row 82. So this is set up uh, well enough, but before we export it, let's show you how you set up on the other side. So I go back to my new project. We don't have really have any systems above the parameter set bar, so let's start a project with an optimization system. So I go down here, I grab my goal driven optimization, and I drag it up here, and it immediately creates a parameter set bar and connects to it. But there's no parameters. If I go into design of experiments now, there's nothing in here to work with. So we return to the project and we need to create some parameters in the parameter set bar. 
So I'm going to create a new parameter, parameter names based off my Excel spreadsheet. So let's pull that back. So my parameter names are input X, input Y, and result. So new name, input X. New expression. And I like to pick a number that's about in the middle of the range somewhere. So and same for this other one. This one becomes input Y. And we'll set its central value as about 1. Now, I don't have any more input parameters, but I have a new output parameter. So in this, it's a little different. You start by typing in the value. So we'll start with 0 0.5 here, and then it lets me name it. And I'm going to name it result. Appears just like it does right here. Now, one difference, though, this result comes out as parameter 3. So it's very important that I go back and I fix that in my spreadsheet to make sure that these parameters line up. You have to always check that and make sure everything is the way you expected it. And I have to fix it in two places, both here and here. So now my spreadsheet is ready. Right here, P1, P2, P3, these are the names. These are the current default values. But I need a CSV file, and this is an XLSX file. So I go to File, Save, and I change this down type to CSV, comma, delimited. And I save. All right, so that's taken care of. We can close this. So now I can return to my project. And I can go down to my design of experiments. I need to refresh this to accept those new input parameters and the result. You can see these in here. You can see the right headings over here, so everything is correct. And we are ready to import our new design of experiments. But first, we need to change the method. So I scroll down here, and I change it from central composite to custom. So I'm going to go down here to lower bound and set this to negative 10 and upper bound to 10, which is the, the range of my data. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Lower bound, negative 10, upper bound, 10. So now that range is set up. And over here, I can just type in numbers. I could start by typing negative 10 or, or go through and create these design points. I could also cut and paste from Excel. But I'm going to show you the other method, which is to import design points. And it goes through, it finds that, that spreadsheet I had to select and browse for it there. And it imports all my 82 design points. So now here are my design points already solved, but this design of experiments is still out of date. So I need to make sure I hit update design of experiments, confirm everything, and then accept everything and change this to a checkbox. All right, so now we're ready past this. I can then return to project, response surface type, and you can go through different types of response service. Let's change this to a Krieging. And I will just uh, go in there and generate that response surface. So let's update the response with these data points. You can add other types of points in here, verification points and so on, if you have them, so you can check your response surface. In this case, it's done already. You can check a min-max search, goodness of fit, these sorts of things. And then I'm going to go into my response. Here's the 2D response. Let's make it 3D. You can see here, 3D response surface. You can show the design points that were brought in from the experimental data. And then from here, you can go on and do all the other sorts of things that you might want to do, optimization and all that, which are based on this response surface. Uh, sensitivity, and so on. All right, thanks. Basic summary of steps. In Excel, you need to make sure you properly set up that spreadsheet with the proper format. Uh, the order of the parameters got to match Workbench. You output that as a comma-separated file or a delimited file. In Workbench, you then set up your parameters, input and output parameters, and you got to make sure you check the consistency of those with the Excel spreadsheet so everything lines up. And then you add a design exploration system to that, and you can start working with the data. In Design Explorer, you got to make sure you set that DOE type to custom so that you can then import that table, and then you can update the DOE and create a response surface, optimize, etc.